What's going on everyone? This is Jacob Shoop. You are watching the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, we had Larry live trading earlier today, which was uh, pretty nice. You know, we always learn uh, a lot of stuff watching Larry trade, kind of how he analyzes those charts if you're interested in kind of joining that. We do the second and fourth Friday of every month. You can go ahead and email me at jacob at tfnn.com. We can get you set up on that while we're working on some stuff uh, with the website. You have the composite right now about 0.73%. You have the Dow Jones Industrial off about 0.45%. Uh, of course, the Dow Futures off about roughly the same, down about 0.5%. Yeah, I mean, looking at the composite today, you know, just kind of been marching downwards, obviously bouncing off the low of the day, and uh, you know, I kind of see it settling somewhere around there, uh, at least uh, overall. Uh, let's see here. Um, SPY up about 0.13%, trading right under that 580 level. You have the E-mini up about 0.09% as well. Let's see. So crude, you know, we're kind of surging a little bit again with it up 2.32%. There's just so much stuff going on that is affecting this market in a major way. Uh, you know, we switch between Israel and Palestine and then, uh, you know, with, excuse me, Israel and Iran and then with everything going on in China. I, I guess that the uh, leaders of the party over in China are getting together, especially you know, Xi Jinping will be there to discuss kind of what's going on there. They're having a lot of issues, uh, at least right now, cracks starting to show in uh, their real estate. Uh, so we'll kind of see what happens with that. I, I have a feeling, you know, there might be some kind of, uh, some deeper reforms that will need to be made uh, going forward. This of course was necessary, at least if you look um, you know, how, how China views themselves, right? This very vast, rapid growth was, was necessary to fulfill kind of what uh, Xi Jinping and the party wanted to do, um, but it seems like they might have to uh, kind of pivot a little bit away, um, you know, if they're not gonna just do a sole stimulus uh, with the whole country. Yeah, the gold contract of about 0.16%, uh, still trading under its high of 2,757, right now at 2,753. You have silver about sideways right now at 33.78, copper up about 0.39%. Uh, the bonds kind of going down in price right now. Uh, Celsius, we have earnings coming in on Celsius November 5th. I have no position right now in Celsius and I really don't want to take one um, even before earnings. It seems like some of, there's some pretty irregular call action um, around 3150 uh, for the end of November, which is kind of interesting. Uh, a lot of times it can be seen as a bullish signal, you know, definitely when you're making uh, lows here and, and not able to get off them. We'll kind of see what happens with it. You know, you had that big article that was released. It was a study saying that a third of teens uh, still enjoy Celsius and drink it. Um, it just seems though that they kind of had um, basically a purchase of oversupply from Pepsi and it made everyone think that they were doing a lot better than in theory they really were and Pepsi is still trying to get through uh, that volume that they had purchased. So we'll see what happens. Um, it could be cause for some pretty stellar movement in Celsius if they have anything neat, but from what I can read and kind of what it, what's expected uh, besides for that irregular kind of call volume, for the end of next month, I can't really see a reason uh, for getting into it. And this isn't really, you know, attractive at this level. You know, you have high volume battles here. You have a small kind of gap up from 2820, the low here. You have next day a little bit higher, closing, you know, roughly around 30, 36, and then a gap up, and then some nice movement to the downside, closing that gap on low volume. You know, you might have a consolidation at this point. I think really at this time, it's gonna be a news driven, right? So we'll see what happens with them. Uh, let's see, G off a little bit, Disney off a little bit. Not really like a whole lot going on, I feel like. Um, of course, NVIDIA now is the most valuable company in the world. We can take a look here. Trading a market, market cap of, yeah, oh my gosh, 3.4 trillion. That, that is pretty nuts to me. Um, I think I, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday. I didn't have really enough time to go through all of it, but I was concerned somewhat of the stint of flow of, of NVIDIA chips into China and how that was gonna kind of impact them. Um, it's always kind of weird to function in how India will, will operate in uh, 
the world economy. You've had this idea of India being a world power by this time, and then and then you know we extend it out a few years, extend it out a few years. I do think India has the potential uh, to really become a massive manufacturing powerhouse in the event um, you know we go on with China and maybe we don't want to do so much business with them, or the rest of the people become you know middle more middle class, become more educated. They don't want to do these kind of long factory work things. India still has the potential. Uh, Quite a large workforce. Of course, Vietnam is getting some of that as well. Uh, but it seems like NVIDIA has found a place to kind of sell some more chips uh, in India, which is awesome. I was talking about this yesterday. You have Tech Mahindra using NVIDIA's chips and software to develop Indus 2.0. It's an AI model uh, in Hindi. Uh, infrastructure providers Tata Communications and Yoda Data Services also plan to buy and use tens of thousands of H100 chips by the end of the year. So that's nice. They can still profit on uh, other countries, namely in the West, buying Blackwell and still be able to sell quite a few of their H100 chips that they're able to pump out uh, quite well. Let's see here. Yeah, so other technology services, especially Wipro, uh, have been using NVIDIA software to develop customer, uh, excuse me, custom AI applications for corporate clients. Wipro trained 225,000 employees on AI platforms from NVIDIA. Uh, that's huge. And again, I, I think this is an argument I make too, uh, namely with Palantir, uh, which we have earnings coming out for them as well. But when you train so many people on these kind of systems, it is hugely positive for those companies. You know, it, it costs so much money to get people off that kind of stuff, train them onto new things. And uh, India does benefit from a lot of forward thinkers who are willing to, especially like in the tech realm. Uh, who are willing to take, I would say, greater risks than other people. But I would I would say, too, um, that this is such a vast investment that I think NVIDIA um, has a really nice market that's budding in India, especially as that country uh, develops more and more and more. And uh, they act absolutely have been players recently on a global scale, which is kind of nice. Um, as well, TSMC, which I'm starting to like this even more, right? It seems like they're really just destroying all of their kind of barriers that they have. Let's see what they're trading up today. Yep, 2.94%. We'll talk about them, but their yields in Arizona are unreal for making sure that the chips come out functional. It's a 4% gain, which is nuts. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get back and go over some other stuff.